for joining us on tonight for Bible study. Our scripture will come from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. And it says, For in him every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason, it is through him that we say the amen. For in him, every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason, it is through him that we say the amen. That's 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. So our response to God's promises is just yes. to your name for you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. God, we thank you for another privilege to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for another privilege to honor you. We thank you, God, for another privilege of reading and studying your word. Where your, God, your word is medicine to us. Your word is a light and a lamp to us. And God, we thank you for the privilege of honoring your word, of hearing your word, of speaking your word. God, we thank you now. In Jesus' name, we ask you to speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for another privilege. It's a privilege and an honor. 
Amen. Thank God for another chance to come before him and hear his word one more again. We serve the awesome and the amazing God, and he's in the world today. Amen? Amen. Amen. In the book, Experiencing God, we are, we are looking at pages 9 and 10 tonight. Mm -hmm. 9 and 10, pages 9 and 10. You have a handout in the kind of guide you through it. Please remember that my, my notes are personal. They are using the words... I and my. And so I want you to make your experience with God personal. And you want to make sure you experience God by using my and I. Amen. We are, we are praying that God meets us where we are, but we need to meet God where he's at work. Amen. Amen. God is at work all around us. We need to meet God where he's at work. Last week we determined that Christianity is a relationship and not a religion. Christianity is a relationship and not a religion. The Bible teaches that, that a religion is, pure religion is looking out for the widows and the orphan. So pure religion leads us into missionary work. But when we talk about one-on-oneness with God, we understand real well that we got to spend some time with the Lord. We have to spend quality time with him doing what he would have us to do, and that is listening to him, listening for him. I'm going to need some volunteers for reading, and you can volunteer by raising your hand right now. Psalm 107, Psalm 107, John 14, John 7, Ephesians 3. Who wants John 107, verse 7? It's John, uh, Psalm, I'm sorry, Psalm 107, verse 7. Okay, Sister Davis. Uh, John 14 and 26, Sister Richard or Richard. John 14, 26. John 7, 17. The Whitlock. Ephesians 3 and 20, Brother Miles. Psalms 103, 7. John 14, 26. John 7, 17. Psalm 103, verse 7. These are the numbers on your paper. Yes. Okay. You don't have a paper? That paper that hits you in the knee when you walk through that door? Oh, really? Yeah, when you walk through the door, it slammed you right in your knee and said, get a copy of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one that you that chair you tri tripped over when you were coming through that door? Yeah, that one. Oh, I need to Next time, I'm going to sit up dead in the hall in the, in the doorway, and you're going to say, somebody move this chair, and then walk right past the list. Okay, Psalm 103, 7, John 14, 26, Sister Richard, just one page. Um, John 7, 17, Sister Woods, and did I miss somebody? Brother Woodlock, which one did I give you? I was 7, 17. 7, 17. 14, 26, somebody else. 14, 26, that's Sister Richard. Okay, I guess I didn't give Sister Woods one. And then the other was on this side of the country. Ephesians 3 and 20. Amen? So we'll, we'll read those when we get there, okay? Whenever we get to that passage, we will, that particular group of, of statements, we will read those scriptures when we get there. We must come to the conclusion that God has a more abundant life for me than I've already experienced. First statement on your page. God has a more abundant life for me. This is not all God has for me. God has some more for me. And I'm not talking about a new car. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about a new house. 
I'm not talking about a new hat or another purse or some more shoes. <laughs> God has more that we can experience in him than what we're already experiencing. Okay. How do we know that? Because we're still living. Yeah. When you're dead, God is done with you on this side. When you dead, you if you're saved, you won't want to come back to this side. Hmm. If you are born again, when you leave here, hmm. all your children, hmm. my, my, my. all your partners, you don't want to see them anymore. Hmm. Matter of fact, Jesus says it like this. Even when you leave your wife over here, you won't have her over there. Hmm. Isn't that something? Jesus says there's no giving in marriage on the other side. There are not relationships over there in heaven as we see those relationships here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we need to treat our family members, our friends, our neighbors right over here so that we will have a fruitful time over there. Yeah, that's right. Because you, you get over there, you're not looking for her anymore. Mm -hmm. She's not looking for you anymore. When we get over there, we want to see the Savior. Yeah, that's right. The one who died for us. The one who volunteered for us. Yes. And you're talking about abundant living. Mm. Girls and girls in my age group, when they were growing up, they, they had a picture of what they wanted their life to be like. Mm. And many of them had the same picture because it was the same picture painted on TV. A picket fence, hmm. a white picket fence, house sitting on the hill, hmm. two and a half children, yep. two dogs, <laughs> one. a house that they can take all day to walk around, a maid for the bottom floor and a maid for the top floor. <laughs> they had it all wrapped up, all set in their mind. But when we get over there, none of that will matter. And guess what? You won't want it to matter. You don't want it to matter over there because the things we see on this side is nothing compared to what we're going to experience on the other side. So the only way we can experience just a glimpse of heaven is to get close with God down here. Have you ever wondered, what took me so long to come to God? Man, I should have been walking with God. Aren't you coming to that conclusion yet? Mm -hmm. And see, people are missing out today because they think the stuff they lose in the world or things they leave in the world is so good to them. Those things are so good to them that they don't want to turn it loose. But over yonder, mm -hmm. no more weeping. Right. No more crying. No more tears. No more backbite. No more pain. Woo, I can't wait to get over there. Now that doesn't mean I got a bus going out tonight. And I'm getting on a plane tonight to get there. But whenever God calls, I don't want no more of this down here. I, I'm wearing this thing like a loose garment. I'm, I'm going to get out of here one day. I'm going to get out of here one day. I'm going to leave here one day. I was looking back at the video from last week. I said, hmm, I got on a baby blue shirt. Folks don't think that I got the same shirt on or from the same company. <laughs> but I want you to go back and look at it and see what the difference is. <laughs> None of that's going to matter over there. All right. It's a baby blue shirt, but it's different. And it's not our voting stamp that's different either. <laughs> Somebody already said, I see the difference right now. I got it all figured out. That's not the difference. God has more of an abundant life for me. Matter of fact, more than I can imagine. More than my eye have seen. More than my ear has heard. More than my emotions have dreamed of. More than my intellect can imagine. It's an abundant life on the other side. 
God has more in store for me, not just on the other side, but while we're still here. Some people are missing out on real living. They're just missing out on, on what life is really all about. Jesus says in John chapter 10 that I have come, the thief has come to steal and to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. More than what you have. I mean, life to the fullest. And God wants us to have it right here, right now. How many believe that? God wants us to have it. God doesn't want us to walk around sad and depressed. He wants you to be a witness. Regardless of what you're going through, he wants you to go through it like a champion to be a witness. My father-in-law said, sometime a man got to give up this world. And a few days later, he got out of here. You living your life like that? With the understanding, with the realization that one of these days I'm going to have to give up this world. And you're not going to be mad about it if you're saved. Okay. If you're born again. If you're going to heaven, you will not want to return here. Yeah. <laughs> Just no hell was made for somebody. Mm -hmm. Last week we closed out our lesson by talking about the Romans road. And if you're not saved, if you're not born again, you need to understand that you can be born again. Right now, right here. Regardless of what you've done. Romans 3.23 says that we all have sinned, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. We all miss the mark. We look like we're saints and we just stepped out of the cloud. I mean, we can dress up on Sunday. Can we? we can dress up, we can look good, and some people know how to tilt their head to the right side, and some know how to tilt it in up over their eyes, and some know how to put on that, that raw blue and, and their canary red and green and yellow. I mean, people know how to dress. If you want to see a fashion show, go to church. We don't have the runway, but people dress. Even at the New Beginning Church, folks look like, ooh, girl, will you get that? But none of that's going to matter. It matters over here because we're humans. We, we see things and we like things. We, we buy what we want. And I urge you to buy what you want. Whatever you want, buy it. The problem is we got too many people buying what they want and begging for what they need. You need to, you need to buy what you need, then buy what you want. God has a much more abundant life for me than what I have already experienced. Ask you a few questions, and I want you to respond. Has your Christian life been a monotonous life? Has it been a dull life? Has it been an uninteresting life? Has your Christian life been a life of repetition? Has it been repetitive? Has it just been going through the motion? Anybody? Well, let me ask you this way. Have there ever been a time in your life where you knew you were just going through the motion? As a Christian, you knew you were just going through the most. As, bless you. As, the, as the military would say, you just marking time. Mm -hmm. Everybody know what marking time is? Two over here. Uh, uh, two don't know. No. Marking time is when you're standing in place, you just marched. you marking time. you marching in place. you marking. And when you don't have a fruitful life, when you don't have an abundant life, when you don't have a, a life that's glowing for others to see, you're just marking time. Anybody in here had a, had a glimpse of that in your life, just at one point in your life that you just had a monotonous life? A life that just, you were going through the motion. Mm -hmm. And check this out. Some people go through the motion and don't know they're going through the motion. Others of us go through the motion, especially Christians. We are going through the motion and know we're going through the motion. Therefore, we pray, Lord, get me out of this rut. You ought to honestly pray, God, get me out of this rut. I'm in a rut now. My, my attitude is bad. I get into it with everybody. I'm snappy. Somebody trying to help you. Move, leave it alone. I got this. 
And then the next day, say, say again. I don't need no help. Yeah, I don't need no help. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. One woman said, said, boy, don't help me. Don't give me that cane with that young man standing there. I don't want that young man to see me on no cane. I'm almost 80 years old. My question tonight, first question. Has your Christian life been a monotonous life? At one point in your life, a good exercise that, that they, they do when you go when you start with a, a Christian college, first thing they do, they want you to write your salvation story. The next thing they do is they put you in personal assessment. This is a class that you got to take before you take any other class, personal assessment. In personal assessment, what they do is they have you to draw a graph of your life and what your ups and downs were in your life from the day you were born to the present day. If you're 40 years old, you, you start off with your life on a mountaintop. Your family was happy. You was having a brand new baby is born. Mm -hmm. Then you go through life and, and you stay up there for a while. Then you, you bottom out when, when you have a, a, a elf. And then you go back up and then you, you flunk something else. And I'm not just talking about school. I'm talking about flunking in life. I mean, I have flunked in life. My life was in shambles. And I've had my low times, I've had my high times, and you've had some too. I challenge you to do that exercise. Go back and look at life and what you've gone through and write a, a rolling graph, draw a rolling graph of what your life looks like. At one point in my life, it, it was going along up here and all of a sudden, it fell off the cliff. It was like it disappeared. But you have to be honest with yourself. Is you, do you have a monotonous life? Boring, uninterested, repetitive, a life that's not fruitful. My next question. Have you been longing for more exciting, more fruitful, and more dynamic walk with the, with the Lord? Have you been longing for a more fruitful walk with the Lord? A more dynamic walk with the Lord? A more exciting? If you have not been, you need to be. All of us need to be. We need to long for us. I don't care where you are, how spiritual you are, how much you speak in tongues, how much you shout, how much you roll on the floor, how loud you get when you pray. You need to have a burning desire, a yearning for your love with the Lord. Lord, fill me to the brim. You got to have a burning desire to be with the Lord. I'm going to have a thirst a hunger for the Lord. Next question. Do you desire more direction from the Lord? And all these, these questions are questions that I'm creating from the reading that you did the last two weeks in uh, unit one, day one. Unit one, day one. Do you desire more direction from the Lord? Do you get confused and say, Lord, I need you to help me? I'm going to tell you, this is the beginning of 2024, and I've asked the Lord more times in 24 and 24. Now, this is, the, this is less than two months in 2024, right? I've asked the Lord, Lord, where, is my, where are my keys? <laughs> Lord, where is my phone? And when I pick it up and I put it somewhere else, within the next hour, I'm asking, Lord, Lord where is it? Lord, I know you know. I put in the GPS this morning, put the address in, and, and now I know where this place is, but I gotta get to the building. I know where this place is, so I know I'm gonna go down South Post Oak, stay on South Post Oak, I'm gonna run into a bunch of traffic when I get to 610. I know when I get to Galleria, it's gonna shut completely down. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna just get, now I, I mean, that was, that was a boring time. I knew where I was going, but all of a sudden it said, hey, take a left on Stella Link. So I take a left on Stella Link and it puts me right back in the same traffic. Talking about it, it got a, a, an eight minute faster direction. I said, if I had to stay on South Post though, I would have been eight minutes further down the road. If you want this faster direction, please hit yes. If you want to ignore, please hit ignore. Well, I'm thinking you know what you're talking about. 
I looked down at the GPS, it's red on Stellar Link, it's red on South Post Oak, and when I got to Galleria, it was blood red. Well, I was gonna drive through blood red anyway. So I'm, I'm, I ought to be constantly praying, God, give me direction. Not just direction in Houston traffic, but give me direction in my life. Lord, give me, speak to me, Lord. Unction me, Lord. Tonight we're going to talk about the leadership of the Holy Spirit. God, I need you to speak to me right now. See, in, in church we teach etiquette. Even, even the model prayer teaches us a pattern about which we to pray. But I told you last week, Peter didn't get time to say, Lord, hallowed to your name. Lord, we praise you. Let your kingdom come. Peter didn't get time. He started singing. He said, Lord, save me. He didn't even get now out of his mouth. Lord, save me. Lord, give me directions. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. We, work at, we look at the world in which we live. We need direction. Even in churches, we need direction. We got stuff going on in church that I saw back in the 80s when I, I was so excited. They said they had a Christian club. Boy, I was so excited. It was right over there off South Main by Grammys. I should That should have gave me a clue right there. It's right next to Gram, the Grammys Club, so it ought to be. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's a problem with it, right? So I got with some buddies. We go into this Christian club. We walked in there, Sister Richard, and it was the same atmosphere. I mean, the same uh, glass light going around, ball going around with the lights hitting it, and, and the same loud music. And people can go to the bar and sit at the bar and make a drink what they want to drink. And they were dancing to Christian music, but they were making the same move. I said, let me get out of here, folks. Somebody think I'm out here clubbing. And they were clubbing. I'm like, Lord, the Lord didn't leave me down here. As the Lord, I see, now I go. I'm going to a house party, and it, it was like that. I grabbed my wife by the hand. I said, honey, it's time for us to get out of here. God, give me direction. Give me focus. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. God, I need your direction. Yes. Next question. Is tragedy, is tragedy plaguing your life? Is tragedy plaguing your ministry? Is tragedy plaguing you and causing you to be bewildered and broken? Is tra does tragedy have you down? Have you down and out? Have your life on shambles? Is tragedy beating you up? Look at Romans chapter 7 where Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who, verse 24, he says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this awful death? He says, in my spirit man, I obey the Lord. But here it is, warring against my spiritual man, the flesh. And every time I look up, by the time I think it's right, I know I got it right, by the time I look up, then here the devil comes. And there's a war going on, not outside of me, but within me. There's a war going on. How many of y'all had the war to get here tonight? Huh? You want to excited and say, oh, it's Bible study night. I can't wait till I get there. I want to give honor to God in the presence of the saints. Well, let me ask you this question. How many of y'all struggle every Wednesday night? Nope. Don't tell the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> Final question. Are you confused about what to do? Are you confused about what to do? Are you confused about how to do it? Are you just in the midst of confusion right now? Jesus says that he offers us a, an abundant life. He offers us life abundantly. Now people say, I said, how you doing? I'm like you. 
with a high mark. I'm an excellent. Guess what? After 18 hours of life support, I'm still excellent. After them taking a saw and sawing into my body, I'm excellent. After the blood flowing into my body, I'm excellent. That means that God has given me one more chance to praise him, one more chance to honor him, one more chance to give him glory. There are some people that's going to honor him anyway, regardless of what goes on. There was a sister that was a member of the church and she had, had swelling in the brain or fluid on the brain or something. I went to the hospital to see her and she couldn't speak a word. She couldn't recognize her family, but she wasn't cussing. Everything that came out of her mouth was Jesus have mercy. She couldn't recognize her pastor, but the only thing she could say and the only thing she said was Jesus have mercy. Her brain wasn't regulated right, but her spirit man was strong. Lord have mercy, Jesus, Jesus. When the nurse came in the room to check valve signs, the nurse had to hear her saying, Jesus. While the doctor's sitting there getting her bad prognosis, she, the doctor has to hear her say, Jesus. She's been a witness, even when she's not conscious that she's been a witness. Can God count on you for that? Can God give you an abundant life like that? When you will glorify him regardless of what happens? Like when you can go through your issue with, with an abundant demonstration of who God is. Can you do that? Can God count on you? Anybody? Mm -hmm. now, now, if he can, the devil going to see. Mm -hmm. If he can, mm -hmm. God is going to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I mean, Joe going around having his own business, mm -hmm. and here God comes stopping the devil. Mm -hmm. Hey, devil, where you been? Oh, I've been walking around to and fro trying to find somebody to mess up, <laughs> to trip up. Have you considered my servant Job? And regardless of how long the pressure was on Job, regardless of losing his children, regardless of losing his houses, regardless of losing his money, regardless of losing his wife, Job said, I yet trust him. Can you yet trust him? Will you yet trust him? Have you even thought about trusting him? When you're driving down, you know, in, in Houston, you'll get somebody cut off. You'll get cut off in a heartbeat. Mm. <laughs> you know, Sister Davis can tell me how to drive from that passenger seat. <laughs> and it always happens when she looks down on her paper or her book. It always happens at that moment. Mm. I slam on brakes. I'm swirling. So what happened? It's over now. <laughs> Do you cuss at that moment? Or do you call on Jesus at that moment? Are you throwing fingers out the window? Are you calling on Jesus? Are you confused about what to do? How to do it? Is God faithful to you? Are you living the abundant life? Because we can choose to live the abundant life. You know that, right? In the 90s, I took a census and walked down under the Pierce Elevator Bridge, and I just took a census of the brothers down there. Why are you here? What happened? And you gotta understand, most of the men out there and the women out there are not dumb people. And they are not unsaved people. And they know the word of God. But some of them, a small group of them, has chosen to be have chosen to be there rather than to be where they have rules and regulations. They chose them. They have made the choice to live a life. You know, they've done documentaries where people standing on the side of the road begging for your money on the corner. Cameras have followed them to their 
their plush cars or their plush houses. And I'm saying, wouldn't it be easy just to work? And they stand out there in the sun, the rain, the wind, the cold, the heat, and they play this game and their skin has been beaten by the weather, the elements. Wouldn't it just be easier just to go get a job? Every corner you turn, we need help. Help want it. But people make decisions. And once they made their decision, the decision is made. There's nothing you can offer them but Jesus. Pastor Johnson went and got this these three big bags of groceries. That's when they gave you bags at the grocery store. They had big bags, grocery bags, like they give you a piggy wiggy. They had these three, he had these three grocery bags, and he's gonna give it to this, this man that said he was hungry. Mm -hmm. He gave it to him, and the man dropped it in front of him and threw it down and said, I don't want that. I want mine. Been there. Been there. He made a decision. Mm -hmm. He made a choice. We make decisions every day, whether to be happy or be sad. We make decisions every day, whether to be confused or, or trust God. And now what I am saying, all of us get to that point. I mean, have you gotten to the end of your rope and, and said, Lord, I'm, I'm holding on, but I need you. Therefore, it leads us to pray. And this is how we ought to pray. These are some things that we ought to keep in mind how to pray. This is found on page nine of the book. And of course, they are personal. They're my personal notes. So I said, I said to you, I need to hear from God when he speaks. When you pray, these are the things you need to keep in mind. Keep these things in mind. I need to hear from God when God speaks. Don't get on social media. They don't have the answer. Ask God for that. Listen for him. Listen to him. God knows everything. The word is omniscient. He's an all-knowing God. He knows everything. I need to hear from God when God speaks. I am obligated clearly to identify God's activities in my life. You have activities in your life. Some of them are God activities. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some of them are our activities. Some of them are the devil activities. We need to identify very clearly the activities of God and what God is doing in my life. When we are doing what God wants us to do, God is in the center of what we are doing. Yes. And we are in the center of God's will. Questions or comments? I am obligated to clearly identify. I'm looking for, I'm scanning, I'm searching to see where God is at work and how is he at work in my life. Number three, I believe God to be. This is what the Hebrew writer says, that he that, be, that has faith must believe that God is. I believe, that, I believe God to be and do in my life everything that God has promised. The question is, has God promised us some of the things we want? Mm. Has God made us that promise? Mm. Yeah. Or have we said, God, this is what I want, and I want you to fix it? Mm. And that's what we ought to do. We ought to pray and ask God to fix things. We ask God to fix things that we want, ask God to fix things we need, ask God to fix the mess we got ourselves into. I know you all never got yourself in any mess. And I know you're not like me where I didn't do anything to get in it, but there are some other things I did that led up to these things that I should have been dead. Mm -hmm. I told you when the boy put the gun up to my head and pulled the trigger, I hadn't done what he accused me of doing. But that didn't mean that I hadn't done some other things that I should have been dead. Because I did. He literally, may have been 17 years old, he put it to my head. And he pulled the trigger and the gun jammed. Y'all wouldn't have known me. I wouldn't have known y'all. 
That's been so many, many years ago. And I wasn't guilty. Fast forward some 20 years later, I go back home and I go to this music and this quartet is, is singing up front and the Nelson brothers are singing and the brothers stopped singing. They were tuning up right before it started. He stopped singing, came down to the front row where I was, leaned over to me and said, man, I'm sorry. I thought it was you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry wouldn't have mean it meant anything to me though. <laughs> wouldn't have meant anything to my mom, my dad, my brothers and sisters. Sorry wouldn't have meant. And he pulled the trigger, and God said no. Somebody told me that God sent an angel, and the angel put his finger in the barrel of the gun. That sounds real spiritual, anyway. But one thing about it, I was able to walk away. And I wasn't guilty. But there are a lot of other things I had done that I deserved to leave here. I believe God to be. And I believe God to do in my life everything that God has promised. We have visions. We have hopes. We have dreams. And we ought to have visions, hopes, and dreams. And we need to make sure that God has promised it. Because God keeps his word every time. I'm telling you, God does not lie. The scripture says that God is not a man that he will tell a lie, that he lied. In other words, God doesn't lie like me and lie. God is the spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Next. I should adjust my belief, my character, and my behavior to God and God's ways. I must adjust my belief, my character, and my behavior to God and God way, God's ways. I gotta adjust it because God, God shows Moses his ways. He shows the children of Israel his mighty acts. There's a difference in God's actions and God's ways. Every leader of every household, every company, every church, every leader of the neighborhood needs to know God's ways. If you're the man of the house, you need to know God's ways. If you're the woman of the house, you need to know God's ways. And when folk talk crazy, you need to know that ain't God there. <laughs> now, that's not God. We have preachers blowing on you. <laughs> Is that God? <laughs> preachers slap me on your head and make me, you slap me two, three times if you don't go down the first time. Is that God? And I really believe that God is doing great miracles in the 21st century. And he's using men and women to make it happen. But God has a problem with the demonstration that comes along with it. What did I just say? What did I just say to you? What does it mean to you? God is still healing. God is doing great miracles. I'm a living witness to it. But God has a problem with the demonstration of it all. The illustration of it all. The, the semantics of it all. The fakeness of it all. God has a problem. God is a spirit. He operates in the spirit. And we must be in the spirit. We must operate in the spirit because God is a spirit. And if we want to worship God, we worship him in spirit and in truth. So we got to adjust our belief, adjust our character, adjust our behavior to God and to God's way. I have to recognize the direction in which God is leading my life and identify what God wants me to do. I have to recognize the direction in which God is leading my life. How is God leading your life? What direction is God leading your life? If I had ignored that GPS this morning, I would have gotten there 30 minutes before my meeting like I had planned to. But 
I'm going to put my confidence in GPS. And it's okay. I mean, she put it together because it's a real good tool. She made it happen. She, she made the, the GPS so we could operate in it. Even though she didn't get full credit for it, she made it happen so we can use GPS. But obviously, the updates are not right. But God sees it way down the road. He saw that blood red traffic way before I got there. I have to recognize the direction in which God is leading my life and identify what God wants me to do. You gotta recognize the direction. How is God leading your life? God continue to lead you. Has the Holy Spirit spoken to you and said something to you and you knew it was him? Mm. Like, but Lord, it would feel so much better if I can just cuss him out one time. <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, no, don't do it. But God, you just don't know. Don't do it. If I can just get two good words out. And they don't have to be long words. I can call them some short words. And the Holy Spirit said, no. Don't do it. Don't go that way. Don't move like that. Don't do it. I have to recognize the direction that God is leading in. Because after all, I'm trying to see where God is at work and join God where God is at work. So I gotta recognize the direction he's leading me in, and then I have to do what God wants me to do. Is that easy? In this fleshly body now. Question or comments? Anywhere, anybody. Because I know you got comments. You read this. We've been in this chapter for two weeks, three weeks already. Question or comments? Okay, I wait when I when I get past these last two, then I'm gonna open up for discussion, all right? I, I want to know what I need to do in response to God's activities in my life. First of all, I want God to lead me. I want to know how he's leading me. But now I want to know what to do as God is having these activities go on in my life. Whether it's death, depression, divorce, destitute. When I first came to Houston, I was looking for my for furniture for my, my bachelor pad, and I was being coached by my homeboy. He said there are three things you gotta do when you when you uh when you buy furniture. You gotta find somebody who is destitute. You gotta find somebody who's going through a divorce. Or you gotta find somebody who's suffering from death. What was he trying to tell me? He said, if you're going to get some good, heavy furniture to put in your bachelor pads, people will sell it cheap if they're destitute. Mm -hmm. The estate sales after death will be cheap. Mm -hmm. Or if they're going through divorce, that's where you need to go because it's cheap. And I found that to be true. Mm -hmm. I found it to be true. I found it to be true. And that's why undertakers get fit to rich. <laughs> undertakers get filled to rich. I mean, they said, you know, you don't want, you don't want to bury them in a casket that's gonna leak water in it, do you? See, this one here, it's a it's a stainless steel one. It would never rust. And it has a rubber grumbling around it. And for another $800, you can put your loved one away very well. And when the people walk in the, in the church and they see that casket up there, they're going to be saying, ooh-wee. I saw a guy get buried in a, a casket that was painted, by the Dallas, painted with the Dallas Cowboys symbol all over. They had to send it out. They had to hold his body out another week so they could paint it with the Dallas Cowboys symbol all over. Sick, sick. I mean, the brothers walked in, they were like, ooh, we, boy, he's Dallas Cowboy now, but he's dead Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> he's still dead. <laughs> and when you, when, you go, when you have death in your family, you have to take somebody from the church with you. 
your pastor, a deacon, somebody that's stable, somebody that's not as victimized as you. Because they'll sell you the whole farm and you'll get a piece of land this big. Cremations have gone up out the roof now. Because they know that people are destitute. They know they're in, in depression. They know they, are, they have had death and they're going to take advantage. My, my high school science teacher, Mr. S Mr. Scott, says, I don't care what they do. They can freeze me and cut my ankles off and screw me in the ground. He said, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. That sounds so insensitive, doesn't it? <laughs> that, sound, that sounds so insensitive, doesn't it? But now more and more people are going to, to cremations. Why? Why are they going to cremations now? Less expensive, less headache. Less expensive, less headache. Mm -hmm. Lady walked in the, in the field, in the, in, the, in, the, in the church. She had this urn. Is it, is it called an urn? Had this urn with it. It was nice and gold. And she said, Pastor, I got it right here. I got it right here. I know Sister David's not going to keep her ashes. <laughs> the jury's still out whether she's going to go to sleep in the same place that night. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with the woman. I don't know. I want to know what I need to do in response to God's activities in my life. What activities God got you going through in your life that you really, 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 really don't want to be in? I will experience God accomplishing through me what only God can do. God is going to accomplish through me some things that only God can do. Nobody can do this but God. Somebody said, if God can save me, he can save anybody. If God can save me, God can do a good job of saving anybody. God is a miracle worker if God saved me. Mm -hmm. I want to experience what God is accomplishing, accomplishing through me. God is accomplishing some things to me, through me right now, as I'm going through right now, some things that I'm seeing right now, and it's not for me to brag about it. If we're going to brag, we brag on God. Amen. If we're going to celebrate, we celebrate God. When we start celebrating our knowledge, celebrating who we are, celebrating what we do, then we get into pride. And pride comes before the, before the fall. Okay, questions or comments? Now, y'all making me look like y'all didn't read the book. Because I know you got some comments. Questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. What's a good example of God's activities? Days world. Okay. The question is, what is a good example of God's activities in today's world? Prime example, um, I wanted to be a master engineer, and I envisioned in my mind our own Davis Engineering. And Davis Engineering took up a whole block. And Davis Engineering was going to be servicing everywhere around the state. At that time, I was in Mississippi. So Davis Engineer, it was it was going to be it's going to be the number one engineering company in the entire state. I don't have my one engineering company. <laughs> when we look back up, I had to change my belief. I had to change my character. I had to change my behavior to get on board with God's ways. And now I envision a group of buildings, but it is to the glory of God, not to the glory of Davis. Another thing is, another way that God is at work right now is that God is at work steering us in the right direction. Uh, let's say uh, some people always use the ex example of a house. The house I have now is just what I need. It's, it has the rooms I need. 
I didn't know I needed, I thought I needed this big plush house, but some kind of way the contract didn't go through or, or somebody beat me out in the bed. But now that God has led me to this house, it's just what we needed. Another example. The Bible says that God will pour out your blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. Pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive, right? You're unemployed, you've been waiting on a job. This job pays $5 an hour more than this job, but you don't get this job. You get the one for less money. And all of a sudden, the job that was paying $5 an hour or more, they, lay, they had a big layoff and everybody that got, got hired the last year got laid off. God protected me because now I'm still working and I'm able to work here until I retire, God protected me. Another example is that I get laid off, other people keep their job, and this happened to me. When I came here, I, um, I worked at this job, and then they hired it, another guy, and he had to go out for open heart surgery. So they had to downsize about six months after he came back. I was 22, maybe 23, he was 52. So the, the boss had to make a decision. He had less seniority than I had. So the boss decided, since Ken has all these medical bills and man is young, he can get another job. Mm. But Ken has all, this is the example that, that my immediate supervisor gave me that the manager said. Ken has all these bills. He just had open heart surgery. And he has all these bills and he can, he got to pay all these bills. Matt is young and he can get a job somewhere else. That didn't feel good. And it didn't help that he was another couple. And it didn't help that I was right from Mississippi. It didn't help that I grew up in the civil rights era. And now I see it flow. I mean, I didn't focus on the fact that he had and medical bills, I focus on the fact that he's an old man. Mm -hmm. And at 52, when you're 22, that's old. Mm -hmm. He's older. He's white. I'm black. And now, my black manager lets me go. Mm -hmm. But, God was at work behind the scene. When I was there, I was praying, God, give me a job that will pay me $20 an hour, I mean, pay me $20,000 a year. That was my prayer. Now I look at that same written prayer and I laugh at it. If I had stayed there, I may be up to $20,000 now. But because they let me go, God blessed me with way more than $20,000. Oh, that's right. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? Are you shooting for anything else? Anybody else? Anybody? Any other question? God knows how to bless us more than we know how to bless ourselves. God knows. Yes? God knows. The Holy Spirit. I must interact with God so that God can reveal to me his ways and how God wants me to apply these truths in my life. I must interact with God. I must interact with God. How do we interact with God? How do we interact with God? Anybody? How do we interact with God? Quiet time, sharing, uh, listening, I mean, studying his word. Studying his word. Uh, Quiet time, listening to God, meditating on his word, praying and asking God to, to speak to me. Because we are guilty of praying and giving God our laundry list. But then what we do... <laughs> We get up and stop praying. Mm -hmm. But when we pray, it ought to not be a monologue. It ought to be a dialogue. Mm -hmm. We talk to God and God talks to us. Who has Psalm 103 and 7? Psalm 103 and 7. Psalm 103 and 7. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. Okay, so God makes his ways known to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. See, the leader needs to know God's ways. I need the Holy Spirit to guide me. Holy Spirit, guide me. I think it was Benny Hinn that wrote the book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. 
And in his book, he was pointing out the fact that every time we get up in the morning, we need to say good morning to the Holy Spirit in such a way that the Holy Spirit will lead God and be with us all day. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us. The Holy Spirit is my personal teaching and my personal counsel. Who has John 14, 26? John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit is my teacher, my counselor. He's a personal teacher and a personal counselor. John 14, 26. Okay, so thank you. Jesus, Jesus says that I got to leave you, John 14. And if I don't leave, the Holy Spirit won't come. The Holy Spirit is coming and he is the comforter. He will lead you, direct you, and he will be your teacher and your counselor. He will be your counselor. The Holy Spirit is working in me. The Holy Spirit, who's working in me? The Holy Spirit. Why do I say who? Why do I say it? Why am I using the term who or he? Why am I not saying it, the Holy Spirit, it? Holy Spirit is a person. He is leading me. He's my personal teacher. You don't want a dog to be your personal teacher, right? You don't want a cat to be your personal teacher. Those are it. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's an intelligent being. He is my teacher. He's my counselor. He is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working in me. He lives in me. He resides in me. He belongs to me and I belong to him. He's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working in me. The Holy Spirit will confirm in my heart the truth of the scripture. See, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they totally are one. They totally agree. There is no deception. There is no disagreement. There is, is no complaint between the three. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. They are one. The Holy Spirit leads me into an intimate relationship with the creator of the universe. Who's the creator of the universe? God is. The Holy Spirit leads me into an intimate relationship. What is the word intimate? What is intimate? An involved, intimate relationship. It is fellowship. It is the same word, kononia is the same word that we get intercourse. It is kononia. It is intimacy. It is intimacy. We have to teach men sometimes that, that intimacy is not sex. Intimacy is holding hand, winking eyes, touching gently. When it comes to God, we want to get involved with God in an intimate way. Where we exchange with God and God exchanges with us. We get to know God and God gets to know us. It's intimacy. That's why the Bible says that Mary did not know a man. What it's saying is that Mary wasn't intimate with a man. It's, she was intimate with God. Her lifestyle was an intimate relationship with God. That's why God chose her. And we have to have an intimate relationship with the creator of the universe. The word of God. The scriptures are the authority of God's will and God's way. The Bible is the authority. The scriptures are the authorities of God's will and God's way. There is no other authority above God's authority. You cannot depend on tradition. You cannot depend on experiences. And you cannot depend on opinions. You got to depend on the word of God. Yes, sir. I skipped the scripture. John 7. I guess that's your, yours. That's right. John 7, 17. <laughs> if it was somebody else, I expect you to tell them that too. <laughs> uh, John 7 and, and 17. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know he shall know concerning 
the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. So if we're going to watch, walk with God, if we're going to live with God, if we're going to be intimately involved with God, we need to know God's will. We have to get to know God's will, get to know God's way. If anybody want to be intimate with God, we got to know God's will, God's way. And how do we learn his will, his way? Through God's word. That's why it's so important for you to be here tonight. That's why you fought the devil to get here. That's why you pushed the struggle aside to get here. That's why you're listening now, because you know that you need to know God's will. You cannot depend on, I cannot depend on, we cannot depend on our traditions, our experiences, or our opinions. Everybody got those. And they're useless if they're not lining up with God. The Bible is God's word to mankind. The Bible is God's words to mankind. God has sat down and wrote us a letter. God has sat down and wrote us a letter. God has written us a letter. God has written us a letter, and it is his Bible. It is the scripture. It is the word of God. God has written to us. God had us in mind when he wrote the book. Some 44 authors that are really just writers, they're not authors. The Bible said God, the Holy Spirit, moved upon 44 men or more. And these 44 wrote as God gave them option. It's not man's opinion, it's God's word. The Bible is God's words to mankind. The Bible illustrations to God's, to, to you, God's desire for an intimate relationship with God. Now that's messed up, why y'all gonna catch that? The Bible is God's illustrations to you or to me, God's desire for an intimate relationship with us or with you or with me. The Bible is God's illustrations. It's God's desire for an intimate relationship with me. The Bible confirms that God is able to do above all we can ask or think. All we can ask or think according to the power that work is in us. Brother Miles. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now unto him who's able to do how much? Exceedingly abundantly above everything we can ask, everything we can think, everything we can imagine, God can do above that because He's God. He can do above. I want to remind us of our goal. Our goal, and you want to write this down, it's not on your paper. Our goal is to have a life transforming life transforming relationship and encounter with God. This is our goal. Our goal throughout the whole year, throughout the rest of our lives, is to have a life transforming relationship and encounter with our God. Our goal, what's our goal? Is to have a life transforming relationship and encounter with our God. Transforming. We want our lives transforming. God delivered me from people that will say, this is just who I am. You got to accept me for who I am. No, I don't. And God is not. You have to have a life transforming encounter with God every day of your life. Christianity is a relationship with the almighty God. Christianity is a relationship with the Almighty God. Christianity is a relationship with Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And finally, this is not on your notes here. Finally, we need an experience with a person 
We need this intimate experience and encounter with a person. That person is Jesus Christ. And that deepens and gives us a more profound walk with God. Your experience is not with a, a thing. Your experience is with a person. Your experience is not with yourself. Your experience, when you experience God, you're experiencing a relationship with a person. And it is the person of Jesus Christ. Your experience ought to be with a person. And when you have an experience with a person, with this person, Jesus Christ, it deepens your relationship with God. It gives you a more profound relationship with God. First, you've got to be born again. The door of the church is open. The only way to be born again is to believe the story that Jesus died on Calvary. That he was laid in a borrowed tomb and that he rose from the dead. If you want to be saved, if you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can have it with him right here and right now. The door of the church is open. If you don't know this God we talk about, you can get to know him tonight. Just bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe if you actually pray this prayer now, you are born again and you're going to heaven when you leave here. It is offering time, and it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give to the Lord. By Zell, our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account. Or you can give by way of mail, and you can mail in your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. Seven seven four five nine. For next week's lesson, I want you to finish page ten to the end of the chapter, and we will do our review. Page ten to the end of day one, unit one. We're going to start at Jesus is your map. Page ten, all the way to the end. So please, ma'am, please, sir, be prepared to participate next week. Next week, we will be doing our review of this entire chapter. And as I said, it'll take a year for us to get it done, and that's okay. We want you to experience God in a mighty way. Are there any prayer requests or praise reports? Prayer requests. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what's the name? Spell the name for me. H O B B S. H O B B S. We're praying for the Hop family. H O B B S. We're lifting them before the Lord. Anybody else? I have a praise report. Okay, give me a praise report. I am a brand new great grandmother. So Aunt Cora is a grandma. A great, great great grandma. How many greats are those? Two. Great great. Great, great, that means a great grandchild had a baby. Yeah. Okay. Aunt Cora is a is a great grand grandmother. My <laughs> goodness. Praise the Lord. That's a praise report. Populate the building with children. Amen. Amen. We have children, we gotta get them in church, right? Yes, sir. Prayer 
request for the banks and sellers family. Banks and sellers. Spell sellers for us. S E L L E R S. S E L L E R S. Dorothy Sellers on the prayer list. Sellers. She has transitioned. Okay, so we need to take Dorothy Sellers off the prayer list. She transitioned and what's the other family? Banks and Banks. Sellers family. B A N K S. B A N K S. Amen. Well, let, well, let us stand to this, be dismissed. What activity do we have coming up? We have church anniversary scheduled for second Sunday, church anniversary in the morning, and also in the afternoon, church anniversary. Please, ma'am, please, sir, prepare, and uh, look forward to supporting our church anniversary. 31 years that God has allowed us to be faithful to him, and he's been faithful to us. Amen. Father God, we thank you now, Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Father, for giving us another chance. Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, as we go. Thank you for your word. Bless us and join you where you are in charge, where you are at work, where you are doing things all around us. Bless our lives, Father God, that we will be a blessing unto others and that we will be missionaries to you. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join together by saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. You are dismissed. <laughs>